Today I'm going to show you how I shot and edited this picture. What is going on guys? Shooting Dave here. So good to see your faces. Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new here and you don't know what I'm about, I'm a photographer from London that now lives here in Los Angeles and I make photo and video editing tutorials. So if that sounds like something of interest to you, then please do consider subscribing. Right, today I want to show you how I use strobes to light this image. And I also want to show you how I blended the different exposures inside of Photoshop so that we get this sick end result. Many of you watching will know that typically I like to light paint my images. And well, that strobes are something new to me. I haven't actually featured them on this channel at all. Um, and the reason for using strobes is well, because my car is a bit of a pain in the ass to light paint. Now I've got to be honest with you guys, I probably haven't used strobes in about five years. Not since I used to shoot portraits back in London, but I never got rid of them and I never threw them away. And the one that I'm using today is a Canon 580EX2, a great little speed light that is really nice for portraits. You can put it inside a soft box like this, but it is also very good for shooting cars as well. And if the price of a Canon speed light puts you off, don't worry, you don't actually need to use any of the big brands like Canon or Nikon. What you can use instead is a company called Young Neuro. They make much more discounted versions of these flashes. And to my eyes, they're just as good, but just way cheaper than the big brands. So if you are looking to pick up a speed light and you don't have one already, then I would definitely hunt down some Young Neuros. They are worth using and I'll leave a link for you down in the description below. For the camera gear that I used, I had a Canon 5D Mark III paired with the Canon 24mm f2.8 IS lens. I also used an intervalometer so I could trigger the camera without actually touching it. But again, none of this gear really matters. You can get whatever camera you want or use whatever camera gear you have. You just need to be able to dial in manual settings and you don't want to disturb the camera when you're taking your photos. So some sort of remote or intervalometer or an app if you've got it on your camera or phone, that will work best for this scenario. Still with me? Cool, let's get on to the shooting part of things. The process of lighting is actually very similar to how I light paint my images regularly. See, I lock in all of my camera settings with the exception of the tail light exposure. Now for the exposure, I used ISO 400, f5.6 and a five second exposure. I then had the flash gun set to one eighth power and that was basically it for every single one of them. And then from there, what I did is I started at the front of the car about two meters away from the car with a flash on a light stand about two meters in the air, angled down at about 30 degrees. And then I pointed it towards the rear of the car. So this will glance down the side of the car rather than facing directly at it. And this is a technique called feathering. Now it's important to do this when you're using a bare flash because you're not gonna have anything to modify or soften that light. So what you want to do is instead of using the intense hot spot in the middle is you want to use the side of the flash, if you will. So you're like skimming your subject with light. And this allows you to get a much nicer quality of light. Once I've done my first exposure, I basically moved down the side of the car, keeping the angle of the flash and the height of the flash exactly the same, and I kept popping off a different exposure about every meter or so. And for the backgrounds, well, I just fired the flash two or three times on a single exposure. So once at the wall, once or twice over the car. This gave a little bit of depth and interest to the background. So the building was nicely lit up and I got a nice hard punchy shadow from the flash itself. Once I'd done the side and the background, I made my way around the other side of the car, basically repeating the same sort of techniques as well. Obviously I'm gonna shoot much more exposures than I actually need to use, but it's always better to have more options than not. Now, and for the wheels, I also popped the flash twice down in to the floor at uh, a low intensity. I have black glossy wheels, so there's no color to light up. So it's all based on reflection. So I was using the floor as a reflection for that. Oh, and I should probably mention about the use of triggers. Whilst the flash was about two meters up in the air and the camera was exposing for about five seconds, during that exposure time, I'll just press the test button on the trigger and it would pop off the flash, giving me a nice exposure. Okay, starting off inside of Lightroom. And now what we've got here is a base exposure. So basically no single flash is used at all. This is just the camera on a tripod, open for five seconds. And as I mentioned, we were at ISO 400, F5.6 and five seconds. So this is just a base exposure exposure not being used for anything other than to build the image upon. And then we go forwards through the different exposures. We can see that I'm over here starting at the front and I start making my way down the side. And there's going to be a bunch of these. I didn't use all of them. I just peeled out the parts of the car that I liked a lot. So if we go through this, you can see how I went about lighting around the car. So some of this stuff is obviously not very nice and some of it works a lot better than others. 
but that's okay, we can combine those in the end. And I purposely didn't want to illuminate the back of the car too much because I knew that I wanted a shadow coming from up here in the left hand side and uh, dropping down here so it would make sense for the back of the car to be in shadow so you can see that I didn't go and overly light that part of the car. Moving around a bit more and then we start this is where we've got the uh, background exposure so a nice little cool flare going on here but we've got this detail in this building over here which is nice and you can see the two pops of the flash make this nice hard shadow edge which I, I really like so as you can imagine from just this image alone you can see that I've lit the side of the car and it doesn't make sense to have the rear of the car too heavily exposed and then I've got some headlight and tail light exposures uh, you'll see how I use those in a bit I always do a couple of those uh, if you're interested about the settings so these are literally less than a second this is 0.9 and I like to get a dark one as well this is a tenth of a second and I think the one that I ended up using was actually this one here as well which again is at a tenth of a second so on from that we have the wheel exposures so literally just lowering the flash down pointing at the ground firing it into the floor so these t wheels can pick up all the reflections from the floors and I did that a couple of times I did that around the front I think I actually used this one here, which uh, I fired twice, so it's really making an intense reflection on the floor, but bouncing that in to the side of the car, so that was nice. Okay, so from there, um, I did some basic adjustments inside of uh, Lightroom. I basically unified the white balance across all of these shots. Um, I brought down the highlights a little bit, brought up the shadows a bit, but left largely everything untouched. Um, I've pulled out all the sharpening and noise reduction and I just put uh, lens correction profiles over the top. And then once I've done all of that I basically came over and select all of the images, went up to the top, uh, hit photo, editing, open as layers in Photoshop and, and that's where basically the magic happens and I'll walk you guys through the rest of that in just a second. Okay, so inside of Photoshop, this is the fully assembled image. Um, I personally don't like to do my color grading inside of Photoshop. I do all of that inside of Lightroom. Um, there's obviously a lot that's gone on here, so let's break it down and start right at the beginning. So we're gonna turn all of these groups off. I like to have groups and all folders for everything I'm working on, so it's just easier to find if I need to make any changes. So as I mentioned, we have that base exposure where nothing's going on. And then I was using this uh, background exposure where I fired it into the building and twice over the car to give it this nice harsh shadow. Uh, so basically both of these layers are set to normal. Um, I didn't actually need to use anything from the previous layer. So yeah, this one down here is completely redundant, doesn't need to be there. Okay, so moving on to the car, you'll see this group has its own mask on it. It's a layer mask for the entire car. Now, I've done a whole series of tutorials on this. Um, if you've not used a pen tool, I highly suggest using it, and I've actually made a really handy tutorial, so check this link out up here. Okay, so moving on, let's build up the rest of the car now, shall we? So we'll turn off all of these layers. Uh, you'll note that I've actually gone through and labeled all the different exposures, like side good, side near uh, rear, near close. Um, just so I know what is going on inside uh, the exposure, so rather than just having a, a file name .cr2, this is just much easier, makes much more sense, and I know where to look for a decent exposure. So we'll start at the back, um, we have a side good, this is set to normal because I didn't want any of the other layers showing through, and then basically I went through and I painted in a few more areas, so if we click on this one, it's set to light and it has a little layer mask, so it's only brushing through stuff at the beginning of the car, so if I turn this off, you can see how much more it would add, but yeah, I only wanted to mask it, so it's just over this front fender over here, so that looks pretty nice. Then I have near rear, which again is just set to lighten, and pretty much all of this exposure was good. There's no layer masking at all going on, but it just really nicely emphasizes that rear wheel arch, which is honestly like my favorite part of the car. So I was really happy with how that exposure came through. Didn't need to do any more to that. Then we have rear close, which again I have masked, so this one will be set to lighten. And if we have a little look at the layer mask, you can see I've brushed it over the shoulder line a little bit, across the uh, trunk, and a little bit down the lower diffuser here. So if we turn this one on and off, you can see what's going on. If it's actually coming in closer a little bit, it'll be a bit nicer if you see. So yeah, if I turn this on and on, on and off, sorry, it's just bringing out all of that detail around the tail light, a little bit over the uh, rear hatch, and just helping pull some information out down here on the bottom of the car as well. Okay, let's come back out. Then I started lighting on the far side of the car because at this stage I kind of feel like the side, the largest or longest side of the car is lit pretty much exactly how I want. There's not much more that I need to do, it, do to it. So I figured I'd start lighting around the rear of the car now. So let's have a look at this. 
Got one exposure being used here for the back. Um, I think I bought some more across the rear hatch. So basically, in my eyes, the car is now done, but the wheels still look a little dark. So remember those wheel exposures that we spoke about earlier. I'm going to start bringing those ones in now. So if we turn this on, this is set to lighten. I have a layer mask over the top of it, just painting in over the wheel. And I have little curves here, just darkening it down because if you come in and have a look, it's a little too hot for my liking. So if we turn this curves on, you see it's a bit too bright and a bit too green. So in the curves, all I did was give it a slight S curve, give it a bit more contrast. And then if we come to the green channel, you can see I've just pulled out a little bit in the midtones just so it didn't look so green. Uh, coming onto the rear wheel, Set this one, this is set to lighten as well. Again, using a layer mask in here, just painting it over the rim of the wheel. And I gave this one a slight S curve as well, just to add a little bit more contrast and a little bit more of a pop. So there we go, that is all of the car taken care of. Now that obviously there's much more to do here. We've got those lights that we need to put on, so let's have a look at doing that. And this is just one exposure set to screen. I always like to have my headlights and taillights set to screen rather than light. And personally, I just think it looks way better and you don't get any weird artifacting. So little tip for you guys if you've not heard that one before. Um, again, I just use the layer mask, painting this uh, basically out of the front of the car and out the side a little bit as well, because I only wanted it to affect the taillights, as you can see here, and a little bit of spill onto the floor, which I don't really mind. From there is a bunch of uh, clean up basically on this plate, like removing my license plate and getting rid of some of the dirty marks on the car because I live in LA and my car is never clean. Uh, so yeah, just go through some of these real quick. So let's turn off all of these. So we have all of these like highlights down here in the lower bumper, which I didn't want to get rid of all of them, but I wanted to uh, tone them down a little bit and clean them up. There was also some like flash marks in the side of the car that I wanted to get rid of, like over here on the rear wheel arch. I uh, wasn't liking that too much, so yeah, getting rid of these guys down here. And I just like to go around the car with a fine tooth comb. Sometimes you'll see some fingerprints that you want to get rid of as well, because I do drive this car on the regular. So yeah, I want to make sure I'm cleaning up those. Uh, if we turn this one off as well, I think there's some more, yeah, some more in the rear hatch over here that I took care of. And then we've got the license plate. Um, I don't really know why people in America like to clean out their license plate. I'm not parked or doing anything illegal, but I got rid of it anyway because that seems to be what all the cool kids are doing. Moving on, there's a bit more paint work that I did, so just basically coning some of these tones into this area just to try and disguise all this messiness that's going on. A bit more coning uh, going on as well. Uh, a bit of colour balance because it's to my eyes looked like it was jarring too much, so yeah, I just wanted to dull it back a little bit. Um, and then I got some more fingerprint uh, removal going on over here. At this stage, I was looking pretty happy at the image. I, I liked the way it was coming together, and I knew I was pretty much done here. If there is anything that I spot at a later date, I'll go back and edit it, but for now, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. So I'm gonna take you guys back into Lightroom, and I'll show you how I graded the image. Okay, so back inside Lightroom, uh, this is the before, and this is the after. And you can see I've obviously manipulated uh, the background a little bit, but I'll get into that in just a second. Now, starting up in the basic panel up here, I've, uh, I've done a bit of exposure correction. I've gave it another third of a stop exposure. I felt it was looking a little bit dark. So uh, to give it just one third, if you're interested, you can hold down shift and press up arrow or down arrow. This will up um, or down your exposure by one third of a stop. Um, I also dialed down the highlights a little bit, lifted the shadows a tiny bit, pushed some um, brightness into the whites and uh, pulled some blacks out as well, making it a little bit more punchy. Um, tiny bit of clarity and texture. Um, bit of vibrance but also taking away the saturation so tonally getting more uh, saturation in there but also globally dialing down the saturation so it doesn't look too garish or you don't get any areas where the, the paint starts to look a bit weird. Uh, moving down my favourite tool is the tone curve just added a very super subtle uh, S curve in there to add a little bit of contrast uh, in the blues as well pushing a little bit more blue into the shadows and pulling them out the highlights which will push a little bit more yellow into them it's just a, a way I like to tone and colour grade my images it's just a personal preference thing you can use whatever works best for you if we look at the green channel nothing there nor with the red channel either um, so scrolling down 
Uh, this new color grading panel inside a Lightroom is actually very interesting. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with it, and it's really easy to get a nice look to your images just using this panel alone. And I may do a tutorial uh, in the future about it. So if you're interested in that, then let me know down below. So basically, all I did here is add a little bit of uh, blue and cyan into the shadows, into the midtones. I had a little bit of yellow and orange, and the same again for the highlights. And I, I like the way that looks. So if we turn this off, this is what it looks like. And then we turn it back on. And it just has that kind of like filmic cinematic kind of look. And I, I really like the way it's looking. Moving on, I've added some sharpening into it. So quite a large amount with a pretty decent radius on there as well. Um, and then quite a lot of detail, but combating all of that by using masking in there because we don't want to globally sharpen everything. We want to just sharpen the areas that want to be sharp and leave the rest, things like the paint alone because you don't want to sharpen that. Otherwise it looks like it's made from sandpaper and no one wants that. Um, I added a little bit of noise reduction in there. It's not necessary, but it is a cool little tip. Um, it actually smooths out the paint a little bit, so it makes it look a little bit better. Don't go overboard with it, because otherwise your image will end up looking like a painting, and you don't want that at all. So yeah, just the right amount of noise redu reduction going in there. Um, I think it was under lens corrections that I played around with it. No, it is in transforms here. So you'll notice how this background changes a little bit. Um, I just wanted to make sure the building was super straight and super horizontal and vertical because when it's a building, it's built that way. You want it to look like it's correctly standing up and not falling over. So I just played around with the vertical and horizontal transforms a little bit just so it looks nice and squared off. Oh, and lastly, the last thing I did was add a crop on there. I added a 4x4 or 8x10 crop to it, and I just straightened up the image a little bit because I knew that I was going to be posting this on Instagram, and 4x5 is the best aspect ratio to do that. And there you have it guys, I hope you like the end result and I hope you learned something along the way in this video as well. I certainly did. It turns out that using strobes is a bunch of fun and it's way faster than light painting so I'll definitely be doing that again in the future. Anyway guys, that is all from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and follow me on Instagram. I am at ShootingDave and as always guys, I will see you in the next one. See ya.